Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I am Brian Warren. And I'm Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson. Welcome to the show. Laura Lynn, mm. you know, we, we see people that are, are really catalytic, people who turn things around with God's help. Do you know someone who's really turned things around with God's help? I was really inspired by a woman. Her, her name is Yvonne St. Germain, and she's mm -hmm. from the Saskatoon area. She was a crack addict, a young woman, just into alcoholism, nothing to live for, desperate, suicidal, cried out to mm. God one day. She said, there must be more than this. And the elders uh, prayed for her, and Jesus touched her life so profoundly. Wow. She is now an award-winning singer. She goes across the land. She is just beautiful inside and out and has just, and it's been years and years of serving God. And you look at that and you go, every crack addict needs to know that there's hope. Everyone yes. who is stuck in addiction, who thinks that their life is just a mess and God can't heal it, it's a lie. And the enemy is so brilliant at trying to convince us that what has happened is going to determine our future so and that we true. can't get out of it. So true. You know, do you have somebody? You know, there are a number of people that I've seen that have been just so absolutely, uh, it's just staggering what, mm -hmm. what they're able to do. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen in the last little while a lot of young people mm -hmm. that have been really turning things around. Yeah. And uh, one, one young person, uh, just a little guy, uh, Josiah, <laughs> you know, and y a lot of times you think that children can't really make a difference. But uh, this little guy, he, he, his father's not necessarily living with him, but uh, the power of God has been touching him in such a way that not only is he getting awards in his schooling and education and everything he's doing, mm -hmm. but he's, he's using his life to now impact the life right. of others, right? You know, if we begin to understand the impact of just taking a step towards God, yeah. how he runs towards us. One step Absolutely. to God is worth 10, 10 running steps of God towards us. And then how he takes the little bit we have and he turns it around. Absolutely. And uh, for those out there who feel despondent, mm. depression, who are in addiction, uh, people like you're talking about and people like Yvonne, these are the people that we know. We know for a fact God can take someone's yeah. life and turn it around. Well, he can. And, and you know, if, if we will just respond to God, I think right. that's the only thing. Uh, yes. Many times we respond to our emotions and we respond to uh, the outside things that are happening to us, but not respond to God who's working in us. And when we respond to him, uh, he begins to now set that course, open doors that no man can shut, and shut doors that no one can open up, right. like you say about yes. Yvonne. He begins to yeah. bring us into a new place of, of living, a right. new level of living. Well, and if you were to ask her, you know, all those years ago when she wanted to take her life and was yeah. in addiction, do you ever think that you'd be traveling the country, winning awards, that your yeah. music would be on CDs and, you know, being so far and wide? Did you think your, do you think your life would be like that? Of course she wouldn't. Yeah. What we need to know is that God is a great God and his his will is so far above ours yeah you know and and it is from 8 to 80 and everything in between God is able to help you live a life that counts mm -hmm. a little later in the show we're going to sit down with Pastor Jill Nielsen yeah. from Bramley Christian Fellowship as we continue our week designed to inspire you to live your life on purpose and to get things started rookie of the year Steve Souza mm -hmm. Steven Souza Jr. is a hit with his new team. The rookie outfielder now launches home runs for the Tampa Bay Rays. An offseason trade put the 26-year-old in a long-awaited position. The opportunity is irreplaceable. You play every single day in the big leagues, and it just doesn't happen. I mean, I've sat so many times in the end of my bed and said, why? You know, three years ago, I was out of the game, and now I'm here. It's a dream come true. It arrived after a career beginning nightmare. Steven just turned 18 when drafted by the Washington Nationals as a third round pick in 2007. Jumping right in out of high school, well, that can get to be pretty heady stuff, can it? Yeah, it's, it's something I don't think you're really ever ready for. 
Um, I think you see a lot of kids out of college aren't even ready for it, but they're a little more ready than high school kids. So that pressure to prove yourself that you were worthy of where you were picked always was there. You're so focused on yourself that you don't see what's going on around you. Uh, I was so worried about succeeding on the field that I disregarded other relationships with people and coaches. His lifestyle grew reckless during four struggling years in minor league single A. His progression stalled. That led Steven to seek a quick fix through a banned substance. He was caught and suspended 50 games. He returned stronger physically, but emotionally demanding, carrying himself like a big fish in a small pond. If we were to talk to former teammates, how would they have described you? That's selfish, worried about himself, angry. I think anger was a lot, you know, I, I had a short fuse and with that added to more loneliness, you know, I thought the tougher I was, the more people would respect me. You know, I got in a lot of arguments, got in fights with teammates and stuff, just trying to, to keep that, that, that pride of, this is where I was picked, this is where I belong, I'm this guy. The potential was there, but the productivity wasn't. His hitting, power, speed, fielding, and arm strength branded him a five-tool prospect. Steven's minor league coaches pushed him. I had a manager in 2011 who just kept me accountable for everything. Um, and it was frustrating. I wanted to do what I wanted to do at all times. I needed to be held accountable for, which was my effort. And he said, get out of the cage. And I said, no. And he came down and we got face to face. He said, get your stuff, go in the stands and sit down. And I said, I'll do you one better and I'll go home. And I said, I'm done, I quit. Turns out the five tools skill set wasn't enough. As a young minor leaguer, Steven needed more. An additional tool, a chisel to help reshape his character attitude and reputation. I read all these self-help books, they didn't work. I read um, books about centering yourself and whatnot, they didn't help. Um, it just drove me into the ground more and more, realizing that my own depravity, I'm not gonna be able to help myself. Done with baseball, Steven and his misery grew. Back home in Seattle, he knew he needed to change. Friends spoke about steps toward hope and restoration. When you're at the beach sometimes and you're in this tide and all of a sudden you're trying to scratch and claw to get back and you can fight upstream and it's gonna take you a long time. All you have to do is just get back on the sand and walk back. And all I had to do was just give it up and just get out, just stop everything and look to God who could save me because God's infinite and he can save us from all those things. Stephen went to church where he embraced a rescuing message. How can I help myself if I'm already broken? You no, know, I know Jesus can save me, I know that. If he really is the son of God, I'm gonna put my faith in him and I'm gonna declare that this is the way I'm going. I'm, I'm gonna be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then I'm gonna turn and walk away from my sin. And it was tremendous. His turnaround was dramatic. Stephen made calls apologizing to his manager and organization officials. He returned to play in the minor leagues, slowly earning his teammates trust while developing new personal disciplines. You may know that Jesus died on the cross. You may know that he fed 5,000. You may know that he raised Lazarus from the dead. But do you really know Jesus? This is how my relationship needs to go. Consistently talking with him, praying, and reading the word, and saw the fruits of the Spirit start to take over. The sin no longer appealed to me because I wanted to please my Heavenly Father. Stephen's game improved. After three highly successful seasons, he was promoted to the major leagues at the end of 2014. The Rays saw enough to acquire Steven as their starting right fielder. In this early part of the 2015 season, he's mentioned among Rookie of the Year candidates. An everyday guy that's a really great, skilled baseball player that isn't afraid to share the gospel and, and live the gospel out. So, you know, it's, I couldn't be happier to be a teammate with him and, and, and learn and grow with him. How does one walk in confidence in a profession that demands it? but you carry it out with humility. Yeah, I had to come back and I had to apologize to everyone for all the things that I did. That's not common, um, especially in this game because there's a lot of pride in this. You're competing against a guy across from you for one job. No matter what happens here, I'm, I'm here to support you and love you and encourage you as a brother, as a person, as, as someone who God created. That humility is so different than the culture of baseball that it stands out. And it's not because of me, but it's because of the, the love of Christ in me Steven Souza Jr., whose big swing at redemption has unleashed power, transforming the man that makes the player. I'm in this game because of one reason, because God has brought me here. And whenever he's ready to take it away, I'll go where he, where he takes me. And it's not your success that has been willed, but it's by God's will that you have had success. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? 
there are 20 nickels in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my mom stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Well, we're here and we're encouraging you to live your life on purpose and we pray that you've been encouraged this entire week today to help you do that. We've got Pastor Jill Nielsen and she's from Bramley and that's in Brampton, Ontario and she's here to help us continue in getting off the couch and into the work. Hey, Pastor <laughs> Jill, thank you for being here. Absolutely. You know, when, when I think about uh, some of the the things that you've done in your life, my goodness. Um, the Scott Street Mission, I mean, we've heard of the years and how it has impacted so many lives, but how did your lives connect together with the Scott Street? Well, when I was young, my mother was working there. Uh, basically, she did a job like a Christian social worker, yeah. helping the families and identifying the needs, and she would often take me with her. Yeah. And the most significant time was when Dr. Zeidemann, who was the director of the mission. He came and he took me with him one day out to where the street men were. And there was one man that was kind of marked by the staff and we were always told to stay away from him because he was not a nice person at all and could be very violent very quickly. But Dr. Zeidman walked right up to him and he took me and he held my hand the whole time. And out of his pocket, he took a quarter. And I mean, even back when I was a child, a quarter was not a lot of money. Yeah. And he took that quarter and he placed it in that man's hand. Mm. And that man literally started to break. Mm. And he said to him, someone sent this just for you. Mm. And as I watched that man, and then Dr. Zeidman shared the love of Jesus with him. And as we walked away, he said to me, never forget, there is no one that God can't touch with his love. Wow. There's no one that's too hard for mm. God. Mm. Mm. And, and that set you up for a life of understanding that your life was significant and could be, you know, used to powerfully impact others. Yes. Mm. And, you know, like everyone else in the church, I love God. Mm. I went to church. I helped at the church. But that became what I did. Mm. But yet somewhere inside there was a missing component. And it wasn't until years later I realized that God has so much more for us than just going to church, just reading his word. If he just wanted us to worship him, we'd all be in heaven. Mm. Right. But he has things for us to do. Mm. Wow. That's such a powerful statement because we can praise in heaven a whole lot better. We can pray in heaven a whole lot yes. better. Mm -hmm. We can give in heaven a whole lot better. Yes. <laughs> but he has work for us to right. do here. Why are we here then? Why are we here right. then? Yeah, because when we see God right. face to face, we really don't need all the uh, pep and, and pumping up. It just, it just comes. It yeah. happens. But Dr. Zeidman, what he showed you, living in, in, your, in, in church, you need it more. Yes. I'm fascinated by your journey as a woman uh, uh, living through a lot of history in the Christian church. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're someone, you are a go-getter. I mean, there is not much that will stop Pastor Jill once she gets her mind set to it. Well, you know, one day I was reading God's Word and familiar scriptures, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I'd read it for years. And it was like all of a sudden the Word just leapt off Jumped the page. Jumped out. Mm -hmm. We have to go and do something. And um, my husband, he's uh, much wiser than I am. And I called him and I said, you know, everybody in the church needs to have a passport to be a member of the church. Mm. And he said, you're crazy. I said, no, how can they go if they don't have a passport? They're not ready to go anywhere. And he says, I understand your point, but we're going to keep membership the way it is. <laughs> and, and it was at that point that I realized we had to start do. I had to start doing something. Mm. It wasn't about them. It was about me. Mm. And, and that's where you really wanted to make your life count. Not just going to church, not mm. just being a pastoral team, but 
God was speaking to you about living a life that counts. What did you do as a result of that? As a result of that, I started looking for opportunities mm. uh, to um, gather other women and start doing things that would make a difference for Jesus. Mm. And um, one of my first experiences was preaching on the streets of our city where everyone knew me. <laughs> and at first, I didn't want to do it. But soon as I stepped out, mm. it was like a fire lit up inside me. Right. Wow. That step of faith. And I started to learn, many of us, we pray, and we keep praying, waiting for God mm. to anoint us to do something. But the anointing only comes in the going. Yeah. Mm. As we step out, then God gives us what we need for that step. Mm. But he's not going to give us what we need for down the road until we get down the road. Right. If you're just sitting there, he work. doesn't need to anoint you for this no. great work over here unless you're going to have the faith to do it. But most of us are praying. We're mm. seeking God, but we're wanting it now to know we're supposed to have it to go. So, so right. we just want a validation before, mm -hmm. and we need fire to go, not fire to sit. Yes, right. And, and when, you, when, you, when you look at that, you've done as a result of that. Now, this is, that's a bold step where everyone knows you, you said. Mm -hmm. You were preaching to them. That's yes. the preacher's wife over yes. there. That's Pastor yes, with Nielsen the yes. with the megaphone. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it didn't just stop in that local community. In mm -hmm. Africa, you started now. I've I've gone all over the world. God has been amazing. He's opened doors to many countries. My first trip to Mexico, um, I took a team and God did amazing things. But then I was in a service and for some reason the pastors came expecting to hear a man. And there was five prominent pastors there wanting to hear a man and they got me. <laughs> and they were not happy. Mm. And they were trying to shut it down. Wow. And I thought, well, all I can do is what God's given me to do. So I just stepped forward. And God gave me a word of prophecy for one of the pastor's wives. Mm. Mm. And I stood there, should I give it, shouldn't I? Mm. And I thought, well, I might as well because the meeting's pretty much over anyway. Right. So I gave that word and it just broke everything open. And by the end of the service, I was invited to five churches to speak. Wow. But it, it all started because I took somebody with me and went somewhere I'd never gone before yeah. to do something for Jesus I'd never done before. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so interesting because um, what you're talking about, uh, you practically heard the word of God in your spirit that I've got to live a life that counts. But then you began to now do something about it. You didn't just sit, mm -hmm. but you went out serving. Now, this is very important because I, I know there's some people that are right now in this place. Pastor Joe, uh, in, in the closing moments, could you even now pray that God would give them obedience to now get up and now obey the word that they've heard? Because I know that everyone has heard a word, but now they just have to be obedient to that word. Mm. Sure. Mm. Could you pray? Father, I thank you that you've placed us in this world to be your life, mm. to let your life flow through us. So, Father, for each one that's listening right now, let your fire burn inside of them. Yes. Let them have faith oh, to God, step I'm out into the God. unknown, whatever it is, whether it's to take a pie to the neighbor or go to another country. Father, that they would just step out and let your life flow through them and do things that they haven't done before so you can be real in them yes. and show your life to others. I thank you, Father, thank you. that you are coming back for a glorious church, yes. and it is a church that will move around this world mm. and take your word to each and every one, that not one person, like your word declares, yeah. that every ethnic mm. group will hear your word before you return. Jesus. And we thank you, Father, you have enabled us to do that job yes. in Jesus' name.
in mm. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to hear more from you. Thank you. Thank I you. felt the fire of God, and I remember when I heard the, the word of God move in my spirit in the same way. Mm -hmm. I could not sit. It was like Jeremiah said, like a fire shut up in my bones. I yeah. pray the fire now shut up in your bones comes to the outside. Yeah. If you need help with that, a little fanning of that flame, one 855 Prayer partners are standing by. We'll be right back. Make it count. CBN presents The Transforming Word. Pat Robertson records powerful verses of health and healing. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. My youth is renewed like the eagles. A new DVD and audio CD set by Pat Robertson. The Transforming Word. Available now. When I met Peter, I was, uh, I would consider myself a naive 21-year-old. Uh, when I met him, he wasn't a Christian as yet, but he did say that he wants to be a Christian one day. He was a bit confused with um, the idea of, you know, wanting a godly woman, but not wanting to be a godly man himself. I had this calling on my life to um, be evangelist. I felt that strongly. And when my heart got too involved with Peter, this is when I found out his real beliefs. Peter firmly believed that women were to be seen and not heard in churches. It hurt my heart because I thought that I was hearing God's voice the whole time. Peter invited Tanika to visit him out of town one weekend. She agreed not knowing what he had planned when she arrived. I trusted him. I trusted him. He told me there would be um, a hotel room for myself and he wouldn't be there, you know? I trusted that. And, um, you know, he came in, it was late, it was like 11 o'clock, and he came in and I seen that he was staying. And I said, well, aren't you going? And he said he's just going to stay for a while. And I, I went in my, in, in, into bed and he came into the bed with me and I said, you know, what are you doing? He said, don't worry, don't worry, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to happen. And I trusted him and we laid there and then I trusted him. And he, but he kept on saying to justify what he was doing was, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you, I'm going to marry you. I waited, I was waiting for my wedding, for my wedding day. And I feel that he was, he just stole, stole that, up, that, that dream from me. My, my health started to plummet into this place of depression. My face was broken out all over. The entire face was filled with acne. It was so bad. I stopped uh, washing my clothes. I stopped combing my hair. I stopped calling my good friends because I didn't want them to see, see me. It just felt so dirty. I felt hopeless. My dad called from, called from Jamaica and he told my mom, you need to bring her to, to Mount Sinai Psychiatric Ward. At this point, Tanika had barely slept for seven months and wasn't eating. In her confused state, she believed that the only way out of depression was to marry Peter. Plans were made and she was three days away from leaving when a phone call changed everything. And on a Monday, I got a phone call from a girlfriend of mine. She said, I want you to call Peter and I want you to tell him it's over. And I just believed that God was using this woman. I got off the phone with her and I mustered up all the strength that I could have to call Peter. And I said, Peter, it's over. I can't give you all the details right now, but all I can tell you is that it's over. The relationship is over. It's not God's will. I went on my knees. And then what I seen, almost like a vision, something turned and looked at me. And I knew it was God, but he was just waiting for me to cry out to him. Today, Tanika shares her story with audiences all over North America, and has even written a book about her experience, which has a very happy ending. 
when I met Robert Chambers, who's my husband, who's my boys, it seemed like, like a dream come true. He was everything that I could ever ask for. Just his faith in God blew me away. He had everything I was looking for in a husband. He was sensitive to my feelings. He was more than what I could ever ask for in a husband. God is a restorer. So if you think you've messed up along the way and God can't bless you with your Boaz still, it can happen. But there is a requirement. God just asks us to be willing and obedient to follow him, to trust him, allow him to be your guide. Laura Lynn, God can turn even the most desperate situations around if we would but let him. Absolutely. He is a redeeming God, you know, mm -hmm. and each one of us needs to remember that, especially on some tough days mm -hmm. when we're facing a lot. The reason that we're here each day is because we truly love Jesus and we know one thing, he can change your life. Every show we choose, every segment we create is designed to inspire you as you walk with Christ. And if you're someone who's searching, to introduce you to Jesus for the very first time. We love praying with you and working together with you to see the life-changing message of new life in Christ spread from coast to coast across this land. Would you help us continue this great mission? When you call and join us as a monthly partner, we'll send you the Transforming Word, Verses for Health and Healing, an exciting new DVD and CD package where Pat Robertson teaches how the kingdom of God works and how you can activate the power of God in your life. And in the CD part of the package, Pat shares scriptures from the Word of God that will absolutely transform your life. If you're in need of a breakthrough today, we would love if you would give us a call right now. 1-855-759-0700. You know, one of the things that our guest today said off camera, I don't think she said it on, but was that sometimes we stay in the lines. You yes. know, we're growing up and we stay in the lines, but yes. God wants us to color outside of the lines. Yeah. And uh, what an inspiration to know that our destinies are so much greater and abundant, above and beyond all we could ask or dream. Yeah. That's what God has. You're absolutely right. And what Jill was also saying, and you could see the pastor's heart in her when she was brought up in a time where women weren't necessarily given the opportunity to preach as they are right, today. Right. What she was saying, if you learn to color inside of the lines all of your life, yeah. you'll never go outside mm. the box. Mm. And where we find to live a life that counts, it's outside of the box right. because God wants to break that box. And I really believe today that God has given a word to someone here, yeah. that the fire's on the inside, like mm -hmm. Jeremiah, it's in your bones, mm -hmm. but you've got to now mm -hmm. say, yes, God, I'm going to go out, even if it's in a place. The anointing comes when yes. you step out. When you step out. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, I'm Laurel and Tyler Thompson. And I'm Brian Warren. Have a great day, Kevin. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700 or by email cba at 700club.ca or mail Christian Broadcasting Associates Incorporate, the 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S4T4 or visit us at 700club.ca.